Hello and welcome to Smoke and Mirrors on AI and Games, and after burning through a ton of Mega Man games last month, I was in a bit of a bind. I've been playing lots of open world games in the last couple of months, all largely due to a bunch of videos I'm working on for the show. We have a multi-part series for both Horizon Zero Dawn and Sea of Thieves coming in early 2019, each of which are massive expansive games that play completely differently from one another, but are also very time consuming for gathering up footage. But then of course the Horizon Zero Dawn video wasn't going to be ready for the originally pegged slot of December, so I brushed off some ready to go content in the form of Tom Clancy's The Division. Another bloody open world game. So in an effort to ease my pain, I found myself playing a lot of Ghost Recon Wildlands. Another bloody open world game. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense on paper. But in Wildlands, I've arguably found one of the most refreshing takes on Ubisoft's open world formula, not because it's a mind-blowingly great game, I mean it's solid and all, but rather that it makes some very small yet effective design decisions about how players explore the world that respect my time in a way I simply didn't realise until several hours in. Wildlands, which was led by Ubisoft Paris, is the most recent entry of the Ghost Recon franchise, with the last entries being in the Future Soldier series. This game takes the base premise and explodes it to ridiculous proportions. I'd played Future Soldier a few years back and really liked it as a fun few hours to burn through, and it was also quite fun to play with friends. It was all rather linear and story driven, whereas this one just creates this massive open environment with missions available everywhere. It enables players to work alongside AI characters or with three other humans, which leads to all sorts of shenanigans. Now I've since decided, having started recording this game for Smoke and Mirrors, that it's going to be a future case study entry, given I want to talk about my AI companions who effectively cheat to make the game feel more in line with player expectations. But what made it a Smoke and Mirrors episode was that given I've been getting all my friends to play The Division in Sea of Thieves, they stopped playing Wildlands with me, so I wound up playing the game a lot more by myself. So given I'm playing the game a lot more on my own, I'm paying attention to what I'm doing a lot more instead of just messing around. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty much the rogue element in my social circle and kinda Leroy Jenkins pretty much anything when playing with friends. As a result, I've realised that within this game is an open world where the rewards of completing missions and the overall story structure are a lot more interesting. One of the larger issues I have with the open world format, not just Ubisoft's, is how often the core story is the least interesting part of the game. Many of the side missions are more fun, varied and allow for greater player agency and expression than the main story. Assassin's Creed 3 was the epitome of this problem for me, where everything became so tightly scripted in story segments that it denied you having any real fun with it. And it's obvious that the Assassin's Creed franchise is trying its hardest to get away from that now. Plus, it's funny because I recall complaining about the generic Ubisoft formula in my Smoke and Mirrors episode on Far Cry Primal, but then that game was also challenging those issues in some regards. Primal had you complete quest lines from members of your clan that didn't feel as ancillary as they have in previous Far Cry games. In some cases they were actually a hard requirement in order to complete the main story missions later on. So when I started playing this game months back, I would play it for a few hours at a time and often with my friends. Now on the other hand, I've found it's a great game to boot up for a short session when on a coffee or lunch break, chip away at that progress indicator and move on. This is largely because Wildlands tries something a little different. The whole game feels a lot more uniform in the distribution of missions and completing side missions is a continually useful activity towards your overall progression. I feel like I'm achieving something every 20 minutes or so, and the game is giving me something in return that will actually help with progress. New weapons, new attachments, skill points, medals, and resources for upgrades. The game breaks up with the main missions across all the core figureheads of the Santa Blanca Cartel, with the leader El Sueño at the top of the pile for you to take out, but in order to get to him and his last line of defence, you need to systematically destabilise his criminal enterprise. So each region of the map has missions for a specific cartel enforcer, as well as side missions that often better support the rebels you're aligned with and ultimately give you more resources for upgrades and the like. This distribution means that you seldom have to travel far for something to do, and even if you do, you can isolate a region of the map that looks like it's rich with missions and collectibles, and then yeah, let's go clear that out. It's strangely respectful of your time as a player, who is short on time, despite how ridiculously big and unnecessarily democratised they've made that overall story progression. This tied with the fact that you can easily boot the game up from suspended like I do on my Xbox One, meaning I skip all the loading gubbins when I start it up, is fantastic. I'm pretty sure they didn't do this at launch and they actually fixed this with a patch, but it's great. It's created this wonderful 30 minute loop where I can just boot the game up on a break, 
take out an enemy convoy, smash through a mission or two for the region's Santa Blanca leader, and then I can walk away feeling like I got something done, only to boot the game up again for another run maybe a few hours later. But bringing it back to the main game, the balance of the AI behaviour and systems is such that it's kind of brutal at times. Things can go wrong very quickly as enemies detect incoming fire, dead bodies in proximity, or just spot you out in the wild if you just leave yourself exposed or are not fast enough to consider spatial context. This isn't because of an overtly intelligent AI system. I mean, it's running a behaviour tree architecture that seems fairly robust. But it's actually kind of flimsy at times, as enemies spot you too easily or can beeline to your location despite not receiving sufficient events in the world to actually give you away. But nonetheless, it's interesting as it forces you pretty early to start being more careful about how you evaluate a given combat scenario, prioritise targets, and move through the space. You can quickly pick up effective strategies when dealing with standard encampments as you prioritise skill upgrades for your binoculars and the drone to help you pick out targets and use the synchronised kill shot. But as you move towards bigger encampments and more heavily defended regions, you start having jammers that deny the drone being used. But also things like anti-air defences that prevent you flying in with an attack helicopter, or even a mortar placement that attacks you continually once you've spotted. Sure, a lot of this is horrendously balanced, especially that blasted mortar, but it forces you to become a little more methodical about how you attack encampments. I've gradually got much better at moving through environments without being spotted, as well as taking out whole swathes of enemies without being noticed, and it's actually quite rewarding the longer you play that you can take down an entire military base without being noticed, and then swing in and grab whatever thing it was you needed to go and grab. My only regret is that unlike so many of its contemporaries, many of the missions in the larger military installations have, you know, maybe one or two points of ingress. So there isn't a way to sneak in sometimes, and instead you just have to kind of kill everyone at the front door, hope you're not noticed, and then walk through it. At the time of this video, I'm nowhere near finished. I managed to successfully defeat the security segment of the cartel. Now it's slight, but it does feel like sometimes completing certain story missions is having an effect on the wider world. I can't say to that for certain, but having worked through the security missions has led not only to the Unidad forces appearing to be a little bit more hostile to me than before, but it also feels like they're attacking the cartel more frequently. Whether any of this is actually occurring as a result of in-game systems is a bit of a mystery to me, but nonetheless it helps maintain my engagement in the game. Whether I ever go so far as to complete the entire game is another question entirely. I know that by eliminating two of the four cartel branches, that opens up the chance to take the fight to El Sueño. I may well do that, or just continue to pick apart the world in my spare time. Either way, it's not going to be something I finish soon. I've actually been playing Wildlands on and off for about a year now, but it's only been in the last few weeks have I really returned to it and invested some proper time with it. it it's a recurring problem, given I frequently am distracted by games I need to play for the main show, you know, it's first world problems. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Ghost Recon Wildlands. Something of a flawed gem, but definitely something people will engage with nonetheless. Whilst it would simply add to the existing deluge of open world games, I'd like to see this one grab a sequel at some point. It feels like this is the first attempt at something more ambitious, and many of the gameplay systems need some refinement and tuning to take it to that next level. Plus, a larger appreciation for world systems that operate within it. Let me know what you think of Wildlands. I can totally appreciate it won't please everyone, and some people will bounce off it really quickly, but these games find friends in the strangest of places. And that's it for this month's Smoke and Mirrors. Thanks for watching AI and Games, and be sure to check out the case study on the Wildlands Companion AI when it goes live. See y'all later.